Okay, friends, we're going to make that bell pepper sauce. This is fabulous. You can serve it with fish. You can serve it with chicken. You can serve it with an omelet, with a frittata. You can serve it with anything. It's so simple to make. A child could do this, okay? It's really, really simple. First, you need roasted bell peppers. If you got nothing else to do, go ahead and make your own roasted bell peppers. <laughs> I highly recommend you buy a good brand, okay? Usually, they are in water and citric acid. And that's a natural preservative. It sounds kind of strange, right? Citric acid, but it's a natural preservative. So, uh, and, and that's all they have. And you got to watch the sodium content on it. But usually they're a good brand. And uh, what they do, they take them and put them on an open flame. And they burn it. Burn the skin of it. And sometimes you have some pieces left. See right there? You can see it. Little left pieces. But don't worry about that. That'll all come out on the wash. <laughs> so, first thing we're going to do, friends, is we're going to saute some. Uh, and today I'm using a beautiful basil olive oil. You know, I use all my olive oil. We have a big olive oil business, and uh, we bring olive oil from different parts of the world. They're all gold, brown, silver, metal. We know extra virgin olive oil. They're beautiful. They're available on our site, so you should check it out if you like beautiful olive oil. So, oh, I can smell it. It's amazing. I'm going to saute some onion in there. And I'm going to get them a little sweet. Remember, whenever I cook with onion, doesn't matter what it is I'm making, a sauce, a soup, a stew, I always take the time to caramelize the onion so they're sweet. All right? So it's really simple. All we got to do is a little bit of olive oil, right? Caramelize the onion. This sauce, let me tell you, friends, anybody can make this sauce. It's really simple. And you know what I do? When I make it, I make extra because you can freeze it. This will freeze about 17 years. <laughs> I don't know how many years, really. But it'll freeze a long time, okay? So make extra. I promise you, you, you take a, a shrimp or, or a piece of fish or, or a piece of chicken, and you put this in the bottom of the plate, you put your fish or your seafood on top of it. It's amazing. I love, my favorite way to eat this is with a frittata. In fact, I got a video coming up. I'm going to show you how to make the perfect frittata because, mamma mia, see, people making frittata online is pathetic. So I'm going to show you how to do it correctly. So today, in my uh, bell pepper coulis, I'm going to use cilantro. You can use uh, parsley, you could use basil, you could use dill, you could use whatever makes you happy. I mean, really, it's not like uh, you got to use cilantro, okay? And I'm not even chopping it. I don't need to chop it. I don't need to chop it because um, maybe it's too much here. I don't need all that. Um, I don't need to chop it because I'm going to puree that whole sauce. I'm going to put my immersion blender and I'm going to make a smoother silk. And then, not only am I going to put a smoother silk, but after that, when I'm cooking, after the sauce is cooked, I am going to put it through a, a chinois. And a chinois is a very, very fine mesh strainer, probably four or five times thinner than any uh, a double mesh strainer. And we like to use it because... Where the salad goes in the bottom and we push it through. So I'll show you how to use that later. All right, so let's see what we got here, friends. All right, you notice I got some garlic cloves in there. I'm just going to put the whole garlic cloves in there. Remember, my onion is starting to caramelize. I want to make sure you see I'm scraping the side of the pot. You notice that? I'm scraping the side of the pot because I don't want my onion to burn. So that's why I'm constantly doing this when I cook. All right. Then we're going to put uh, three, four, five, six garlic cloves, put however many or as little as you want, right? And then we're going to take our bell peppers. You notice I removed most of the water that came with it, uh, the bell peppers. Can't remove all of it, but I removed most of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit of that water, just a little bit of that water, just add half of it. And then we're going to cook those guys. They're going to release more water. We're going to cook it. And when they're nice and soft, we're going to put our emotion blender in there. And we're going to puree that until we have a beautiful texture. So this is going to take about, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes, 25 minutes at the most. Somewhere around there. We're going to cook it until it's so soft. Right now, they, they're pretty firm, you see. I could never puree them. So we're going to let them cook at a very low heat. We'll bring it to boil them. Salt and pepper. Be careful with the salt because there's already sometimes a lot of sodium in those uh, uh, preserved, right? A mm. little bit of salt and pepper. And you could put a little bit of hot sauce also in there. And, uh, and that would be great. A little bit of sriracha or, or your favorite hot sauce. And uh, we're going to let it cook. And you'll see. This is going to turn out to be such an amazing sauce. It's a beautiful sauce. It's just going to take a little while to cook and all come together. All right? We're going to cook for a few minutes. Okay, so after it cooked, 
30 to 45 minutes. Just let it cook until the garlic is soft, until the peppers are soft. And you can smell them. They're really, really wonderful. The whole smell of it is wonderful. And you notice, I constantly clean the side of my pot. You see the way I do it? Constantly clean the side of the pot because I don't want to burn it. All right? So, at this point, if you have an immersion blender, this is a great tool. This is the tool I probably use the most in my kitchen, my immersion blender. If you have one of those, just put it in here and puree everything until it's smooth as silk. And it's going to take a little while, or you can take all this, put this right in a blender, and let's puree this until it's beautiful and smooth. Put the whole thing in there. You see? I'm saying put the whole thing in there, but it might be a little too much for my blender. But I'm keep putting it in there. I said <laughs> it may be a little too much, but let me see if I can put a little bit more in there. <laughs> oh boy. It could be interesting. <laughs> there we go, friends. Let me turn all those burners on because I got a bunch of burner on. All right, and then we're gonna put this on there. And I'm going to release the, uh, the steam, so I like to kind of uh, open this guy up. There you go. And now we're going to do it slowly. Oh, well, that's another thing. You know what? Let me just keep this on. There you go. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, I didn't do too bad. There we go. Now we're going to puree this, puree this, puree this. I think there's another speed. I just want to maybe release some of the steam in there. All right. Oh, now we're going high. Well, that's easier with this than the immersion blender, I have to be honest with you. So we're going to puree it, and then you'll notice, I don't know if you can hear my voice, over the, uh, the blender, but I got no much of a choice. Um, you see all the little black spots in there? That's the burned skin. So we got to remove all this, the burned skin. That is why we're going to use the chinois. All right. And, uh, and I have a, um, a one ounce ladle that I'm gonna use and I'm gonna push. What happened is all the pulp and all that gonna fall in the bottom of the chinois. And with my ladle, I'm just gonna push it. So let's see how we go here. Let's see how we go, friends. Oh wow, it's gonna be beautiful. Let me do it again a little bit longer. Let me just do it real quick, just a little bit more. Don't be afraid to do it too much. I'd rather you do it more because you got the garlic, you got the cilantro, you got the onion, you got all that in there, and it's got to be nice and smooth. So don't be afraid to do it longer. Remember, it's all about texture. That sauce is all about texture. So we're going to make sure we get it right, okay? All right, here we go, friends. So now we're going to take that sauce, and we're going to go in our chinois. And at that point, I know I got a spatula right there already. You see? Wait until you see the finished product. Let me tell you, friends, this is a must in a gourmet kitchen. Eh? So now look. You see, look, look. If I just leave it like that, nothing really comes out, right? And now look when I push. You see? What I do is I open up the bottom and I squeeze it. You see, look, look. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, you should be able to see it. Right there, you see how it's coming out? So now we're gonna push. We're gonna push to get all that stuff out of there. I like to usually take a, a container, a bain-marie, that's what that's called, that is big enough so I can just let the, the chinois rest and I can just bang on it. And you see right there, friends? Look, 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 look. I don't know if you can see inside. But inside, I have all that pulp right there. And, and all we gotta do is push that pulp. Do you see, look? You push that pulp right there, friends. And, and look, 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 all that stuff right there. You see all that stuff right there? Now, <laughs> I told you my mom is Italian, and my mom would never throw this away. <laughs> she would refrigerate it, and the next day mix it up with goat cheese, put it on a garlic crostini. <laughs> And we were like, oh, mom, this is so delicious. How did you do this? Ah, it's a secret recipe.
<laughs> I know what that was. That was the pulp, the skin, the seeds, or whatever was left over. So you see, all that stuff, you don't need it. So now, let me make sure I have none of that here and here. And look, I want you to see. Look at this. Look how beautiful that is. Okay? Now, you can do it. You know, when I was in the restaurant business, we would do this four, five, six times until it was smooth as silk. Remember, it's all about texture. But this sauce right there, for a frittata, for an omelet, for a, a shrimp, a fish, anything, it's a fabulous sauce to make. And it's so simple to make. All right? You go right ahead. And, and if you make extra, you can freeze it. The freezer's beautiful. All right? Here we go.